Welcome back, guys. So, I'm going to catch up a little bit. Um, took the body back uh, after doing the dyeing and didn't quite have enough dye, but that worked out okay because I realized that I had some dark stain. Um, and so, what I decided to do is I took and after sanding back um, with some 320 grit sandpaper, sanding back some of that black until um, it was starting to look kind of faded and worn. Um, and then on the back, um, I got at least an, a little bit of a coat of black over everything and it was a little bit um, uneven. And what I ended up doing is um, putting a full coat of the dark stain on here. And as you can see, what ends up happening is um, the grain gets really accentuated from the black dye and then um, the other part of the wood really gets colored so you get kind of this tiger's eye sort of look and uh, and I'm really happy with kind of how that turned out and then I, I did a little extra sanding um, along all of the places where your arm would naturally wear um, you know you have these kind of spots here um, where your arms gonna rest where you're gonna have a lot of time you're gonna have a lot of friction over time wearing these things down so and and that was the that was my idea between my wear marks on this guy. So now, um, after I did that, um, I let the stain dry for a day. So I hung it up. Actually, really convenient thing on strats. You got this nice little thing here. Um, tip: if you have certain things like on a pegboard, um, if you don't want to hook this through to let it dry, um, like some people put a little you know, coat hanger hook like this and dry it like that. Um, what you can actually do is you can hold it by the pickup cavities and you can very carefully, and now I like totally botch it, you can put it on something like this on your pegboard and it's only touching the inside of the cavity. I'll show you so you can see it a little better. So that's just touching on the inside of the cavity, it's not touching into the actual finish. And that part of the guitar will be actually under uh, the pickguard. I mean, well, the bridge is going to be right there, but the other part you're touching is going to be under the pickguard anyway, so it's less critical. How does my shot look here? Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this bad boy and I'm going to put on some gloves. I'm going to go at it with some steel wool. Yeah, steel wool. So some of you may be wondering, why do I wear gloves with the steel wool? Well, while you use the steel wool, a lot of it, little teeny bits come off and it'll be under your fingernails and it gets really messy. Um, and it just doesn't feel great. It kind of like will wear your skin down a little bit, at least for me it does. Um, it can really toughen you up if you really want to be toughed up. But if you're a guitar player and you like to keep your fingers in good shape um, and work on projects, um, I just like wearing the gloves. So you can see here, I'm going to really kind of take all of the edge off from that stain. I want to make this nice and smooth. And you want to go with the grain. And you could do this with some 800 grit sandpaper. Um, I'm using the uh, quadruple grade steel wool um, because I'm going for more of a um, kind of worn look on this guitar in the first place. So if it picks up a little bit of dust and color from the steel wool, 
uh, that actually works into what I'm trying to do anyway. So that's all good. Some of this bottom here. So we've rubbed this all down now with our steel wool and now we're ready to put on some finish. And I really like to use tongue oil. Um, when I'm working on a guitar that I want to look worn, I want to look lightly relict, um, I really like a more natural um, finish. It leaves me with soft wood, um, that feeling of nice soft piece of wood. I'm not a big fan of high gloss because as soon as I touch it, it's showing my fingerprints, my sweat gets on it, it gets messy looking. So I like a more satin or matte finish and I like a natural finish. And I really like the feel of a guitar that feels like it's been played. I don't like a shiny, glossy new one in that way. So I'm gonna use some Foreign Beast Tongue Oil. Um, uh, this stuff works, I've put it on six guitars. Um, this is the first strap that I'll be putting it on though. So. What you're going to want to do is get yourself a little piece of cotton and this is more than I need so I'm just going to cut a piece off. And blow off the little cotton dusties. And then you're gonna need something to pop the top. Whoop, on your tongue oil. And apply liberally. So you can kind of do this. Um, if I was doing finishing on something large like furniture, I would kind of pour some finish on it. Um, but I would probably use poly if I was doing that. Um, for this, you can kind of dab it on there. So you can see it really kind of comes to life when you start putting the finish on there. And typically you're gonna get some stain that comes off. Hold it still, buddy, watch the screen. You're gonna get some of that stain coming off on the rag and that's fine. Um, that's why you use a fresh piece every time. But you can really see it start to come out and in the first coat, it always really kind of sucks in the finish more than the others. So I'm gonna put a little extra on here. Oh yeah, there we go. And it feels good to kind of work with the grain. Um, on some of the smaller spots, you know, you don't have to perfectly work with the grain, but it feels nice to do. You can see I'm holding it like this. There's other ways to do it, but this works for me. It has worked for me well. Do this. Ooh. Should be enough to do the whole back here. Don't bump it, buddy.
Now this is going to look glossy when it's wet, but it's not going to really dry that much glossy. It's going to have a little bit of sheen to it, but this is a low gloss um, finish. And that's the way we like it. And we can always take a little bit of that steel wool and kind of take back some of the gloss if it ends up being glossier than we wanted. And I'm going to put a little bit more on the front. Ooh, that turned into a lot more really quickly. This we're probably going to let sit for two days just because we're not going to work on it tomorrow. But usually you can let it sit for one day and then buff it, or I mean not buff it, but put um, either sand it or you know steel wool, whatever you're using. And then you can come back and put another coat on. And different people will tell you different number of coats. Um, I just keep putting coats on until I like how it looks. Um, after you get a couple of coats, it's going to be sealed decently well. So that part I just leave up to you. I will tell you that I have put more coats on next than I thought I would. And apply. Oh my gosh, my handy dandy little hanger situation. Ah. Almost. Let me just scoot it in a little. There we go. And here's a little trip trick that I use. Um, when I'm done with the tongue oil, you definitely want gloves for the tongue oil because your hands will be sticky. It is sticky stuff. Um, I just take one glove and I hold it in my hand peel back my glove, put this glove in this hand, and I peel back that glove. And then I throw it away. Now I'm not getting any sticky on my hands. It sounds ridiculous, but I like to be clean.